Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning. So, today's class, I am going to read you, uh, help you read uh, an, a, a very seminal, very important film that is Raising Bull by Martin Scorsese. The film starring Robert De Niro and Joe Pesci had a screenplay by Paul Schroeder and Mardik Martin. Paul Schroeder, those of you uh, who know Martin Scorsese's work, uh, they would uh, uh, recall that uh, pa Paul Schroeder has also written the screenplay for one of the greatest films of all time that is Taxi Driver, again starring De Niro and directed by Martin Scorsese. Um, the film is also edited by Scorsese's uh, frequent collaborator Thelma Schoonmaker okay, and they have been collaborators for a very long time. Okay, it's a partnership. It's a wonderful partnership that is still goes on. Now, um, one uh, very uh, very unique feature of *Raging Bull* is that it's a boxing film, but it's not your usual boxing film, which is um, most boxing films or sports films are uh, uh, dramas which are imbued with the spirit of feel good factor, with the feel good factor, but not this one. Okay, so unlike *Rocky*. Raging Bull is not a feel good movie. Um, the one of the reasons could be that it is of course based on Jake LaMotta's biography or autobiography uh, and also the fact that Scorsese himself was going through a very low phase in his personal and professional life. This was a time when uh, one of his most ambitious films, New York, New York is starring Robert De Niro and Lisa Minnelli had bombed very badly. It did not receive uh, either critical or commercial success and uh, um, some of his personal relationships were also going awry and um, this was a period when he was not doing well at all, but his friend Robert De Niro urged him to read the book by Jake Lemota who was a middleweight boxer also known as the Bronx Bull. So, the film was adop adapted from Lamotta's memoir. Raging Bull, my story, a story which is a story of self destruction, guilt, and eventual self realization. I am going to basically uh, address the technical aspects of this film, but I will also be talking about the theme of masculinity, the gender theme as implicit in the film. The central themes of Raging Bull are guilt and redemption and, the, uh, and nostalgia idea that past can never be recovered. Unlike most stories about boxer heroes for example, The Fighter which is a relatively new movie, new recent movie 2010, Jake LaMotta is an unlikable, unsympathetic hero who was famously brutal towards his opponents in the ring and he was also extremely cruel towards his wife and his brother. Martin Scorsese confesses in his autobiography, Scorsese on Scorsese, um, some of you who might, who would be interested in or who might be interested in Scorsese's works must read th this book if you have not already done so. So, Scorsese on Scorsese and he says, I was fascinated by the self destructive side of Jake Lamotta's character and his very basic emotions. So, um, these are the key, the key operative words self destruction and self realization. Um, and if you have watched uh, other films um, where De Niro has collaborated with Scorsese, you may recall that uh, this has been a constant theme guilt, redemption, self destruction. So, uh, these are the constant motives and features of most films of Scorsese. Now, Scorsese and De Niro have collaborated on a staggering seven films uh, or even more. So, some of the major films are Mean Streets, Taxi Driver, New York, New York, 
Raging Bull, The King of Comedy, Goodfellas, Cape Fear and Casino, which was a 1995 film. Um, before we start um, with the film, we have to also understand the period in which the film was made. Now, the 70s, as you all know, was a watershed period that witnessed an avalanche of big ideas. The excitement over films was tremendous and then there were experiments by people like Andy Warhol in, in the world of art and Bob Dylan and Mick Jagger in the world of um, you know, uh, rock music. And these artists also uh, uh, got in front as well as behind the camera. So, movies were big thing. Everyone wanted to be in the movies in that period. Along with Francis Ford Coppola and Woody Allen, Scorsese is the most significant name associated with the so-called Hollywood new wave cinema. Okay. Though short lived, the new wave, uh, American new wave has given us films such as A Clockwork Orange. I am talking about the period after Bonnie and Clyde and Easy Rider, which was the first new wave. I am talking about the second new wave. So, this is the period which witnessed films such as A Clockwork Orange, Clute, The Last Detail, Paper Moon, The Exorcist, American Graffiti, The Conversation, Nashville, Carrie, Annie Hall and Star Wars. So, this is a period when uh, the directors were experimenting and more importantly were allowed to experiment with uh, film genres, film themes, um, gender situations etcetera. And this was also uh, a period where audiences were more receptive to such kinds of experimentations. Now, um, I have uh, already told you about the theme of masculinity and Raging Bull can be read as an example of cinema which underlies the concept of the crisis of masculinity as typified through how men forge their images via physical strength, endurance, sexuality and relationships. Um, so, this is an important theme that um, uh, Hollywood cinema especially. So, masculinity was created in classic Hollywood to keep the male superior. Now, there is um, Jacques Lacan who traces our uh, misrecognitions in to the mirror phase that is first to identify contact with an image in order to recognize ourselves and we have to separate from ourselves. Similarly, men looking at the movie screens identifies with the hero feel superior. So, that is what very simplistically put how cine audience identify with the hero. Classic Hollywood was a classic case where uh, heroes were created so that men in the audience could relate to them, could identify with them. But this is this we are talking about the period when the entire myth started getting punctured. Thus, we have Lamotta yelling at his opponent, I never got down, you never got me down. The fact is that he is just being uh, extremely egomaniacal. Okay, that is what the idea is that that is what uh, he or men like him feel that that is what uh, being a man is all about. But not really so. Okay, I would like you to watch the opening credit scenes of Raging Bull as at this period in order to get a feel of the film. Okay, so, here is a here is a YouTube link, please watch the film and come back. Uh, so, what did you watch? You watched um, Jake Lemata in the ring, uh, in slow motion, boxing away. Uh, he is also surrounded by this glaring um, media people, lights and crowds yelling at him. Uh, it could be perhaps his salad days when he was uh, you know the so called raging bull, he could he was alone in a ring and he could capture the attention of an adoring public, the adoring media. But uh, so therefore, this kind of a scene at right at the beginning, it evokes a kind of nostalgia about the past. So, this is what the film is all about. It is uh, a longing look at days by gone. Now, coming back to the key themes of masculinity and uh, I am quoting you from John Bainan uh, from his masculinities and culture where 
he feels that masculinity is informed by a variety of factors such as historical location where a man comes from culture and subculture so what kind of culture and subculture he belongs to let's assume sub by subculture the, the rock scene the eye or you know the art scene so that becomes a subculture Benin also talks about class and occupation. So, there is a working class masculinity also, there is a white collared masculinity too, then religion and beliefs, ethnicity. So, you have Arab masculinity, you have Chicano masculinity and people also uh, do thesis or research on masculinity of Indian males. So, ethnicity matters, age and physique sexual orientation, education and status and lifestyle. So, these are the key features that shape or inform masculinity. Now, we were talking about the theme of masculinity in crisis and the um, which is like an exposure of the violence inherent in a masculinity that must viciously repress all signs of femininity and or, or even of homosexuality. A man's inability to understand a woman except in terms of the only two roles he knows how to assign her, Madonna or whore. And this is Madonna whore is a binary that features very frequently in all films of Martin Scorsese. Uh, if you are familiar with his very, uh, one of his you know, um, most uh, very early film uh, films that uh, made him a well recognized name in the world of cinema that was who is that knocking at my door. So, there again the hero as played by Harvey Keitel and he regards women along two terms Madonna, or two binaries Madonna whore. Again that is uh, a key element in Scorsese's taxi driver also and of course in Raging Bull. If you are not um, chased and he keeps uh, suspecting his wife of having affairs with various men. So, either you are a chaste woman or a whore that is the idea. In Raging Bull, sexual jealousy is expressed through violence. I will soon show, uh, show you the scene. Um, again, it mourns rather than celebrates the loss of masculinity. It has a very, the film has a very ambiguous attitude towards violence. The protagonist as a uh, is the case uh, with most Scorsese heroes, he is inarticulate, he is artless, he is rarely introspective and ex uh, expresses emotions most, uh, mostly through aggression. He is lonely again like most Scorsese male characters with extremely limited image imagination um, and his dialogue is mostly limited to expressions of desire, fear, hatred and jealousy. Now, uh, coming to his relationships, Jake Lamata's two major relationships are with his brother manager as played by Joe Pesci and also with uh, Vicky, his second wife. Both relationships are haunted and eventually destroyed by Lamata's own self, uh, low self esteem leading to bouts of depression, violence, gro um, growing sense of uh, distrust, suspicion and paranoia. One uh, incident uh, in the movie when his wife describes one of the opponents as good looking and Lamata punishes the young man by pounding his face and his smirks. He will never be beautiful again or rather you know one of the um, uh, people audience one of the members of the audience he utters these lines he will never be beautiful again and this is a punishment given to that unsuspecting man be just because his wife uh, very casually says mentions that he is a good looking boy. Lamata's final fight with Sugar Ray Robinson um, which actually took place in 1956 historically speaking. So, for the boxing scenes and here I would like to draw your attention to um, the innovation in terms of technique. So, for the boxing scenes Lights and shadows and sounds, they all add a hint of regret and meaninglessness to the events. The excess of blood and the lead character's distorted mind is portrayed through distortion of time and reality and his descent into dehumanization through animalistic sounds. 
uh, raging bull is credited for experimenting with sounds a lot and then you should every fight has a different kind of a sound to it. Lamotta's self-loathing is peaked when he takes terrible punishment pounding by his opponent causing many film critics to read Scorsese's fascination with religious sacrifices and Christian rites. Here is a scene the fight between Sugar Ray Robinson and Lamotta. Please uh, watch this particular clipping. It is called You Never Got Me Down Ray and come back. Okay, so, um, you may observe that each fight scene in Raging Bull uses different kinds of sound. Scorsese remembers Frank Warner who did the sound in the film and uses, uh, used rifle shots and melon breaking in order to create the sound of punches. Also notable was the use of silence which became like scoring music and also observe how Scorsese uses boxing montages during the course of the film. Boxing scenes were often shot in the film in slow motion to suggest heightened feelings and awareness. During the fight between uh, Lamotta and Sugar Ray Robinson in Detroit, uh, Lamotta lo lost on a technical issue. The scene is filmed using expressionistic style with boxing ring as a hell as Lamotta remembers it with smoke and fire. Now, if you compare it with the opening shot where he is alone and a hero of the boxing ring and then here when he loses on a technical issue and boxing ring is uh, represented or portrayed as a as a living hell okay, with the blurred faces and out of frame shots. Again to create something extraordinary Scorsese also had the boxing ring on the sets constructed twice the size of an actual ring and it was soaked in smoke. Uh, it may be worth uh, noting that while watching the rushes of the film before the movie was finally edited and um, uh, readied, director Michael Powell, um, the director of classics such as Red Shoes and Peeping Tom, he is also uh, editor Thelma Schoenmaker's husband. He commented that these red gloves bother me. So, um, therefore, it was uh, decided that the film should be shot in black and white. Now, the, uh, the film's black and white cinematography is by Michael Chapman and the, um, and the film has uh, earned a lot of applause for this cinematography. One reason to resort to this was the technical uh, reason because color prints fade out fast. And also the fact that black and white cinematography also helped to highlight the theme of the film which is nostalgia and regret and a desire to bring back the past. So, uh, black and white photography also helped in toning down the images of blood and gore. Flashes of color provide most wistful counterpoint to the black and white cinematography and indicate Jake's happier memories particularly in his home movie videos. So, here is a, a clipping you may watch this particular scene the color scenes in Raging Bull and you will find how color is used just to evoke the home video kind of feeling in the film. We have been discussing uh, the notion of hero's journey as given uh, to us by Joseph Campbell in his uh, a hero with a thousand faces. So, again you can apply the same idea here as well. So, the film is a tragic tale of the fall of a hero from the world middleweight champion to a comedian, stand up comedian in a small time club. Now, in order to portray this De Niro again 27 kg to become uh, or an embody the decline of Lomata, the film sees the peak of De Niro's method acting with the physical metamorphosis, which uh, has inspired latter day actors such as uh, Christian Bale for example, in the machinist where he lost um, incredible amount of weight. Talking about iconography of the movie, the scene that frames the film is uh, evening with Jake Lamotta, where, where Lamotta recites bits of Shakespeare and Tennessee Williams. 
Now, both Dim Nero and uh, Scorsese decided to use the speech from on the waterfront, I could have been the contender, I could have been somebody as example of new Hollywood's retrospective impulse, which is a part of Hollywood's iconography. So, watch that scene also, I could have been the contender from Raging Bull. The film surprisingly opened to mixed reviews and was not an immediate box office success, though it won two Academy Awards for the best actor and best editing. However, the film today is regarded as one of the greatest films ever made. At some level, it is also a portrayal of tragedy of the American dream. To an Italian immigrant family, the American dream offers promises of success and power and is often located in crime and corruption. La Motta appears as a victim hero caught between the two forces, a true product of his environment. La Motta's downfall or loss of family and loss of body, loss of uh, self-esteem is a consequence of the pitfalls of the dream. That is what the film appears to tell us. The film appear, uh, ends on a note of regret as La Motta quotes from the Bible, once I was blind, now I can see. As he seeks forgiveness from those he has hurt, the overarching theme is of reflective sadness as we get a glimpse of Jake's ability to gain an insight despite losing everything. One of the memorable lines is when Jake Lamotta says, as you know my life was not drab, though I would rather hear you cheer when I delve into Shakespeare, a horse, a horse, my kingdom for a horse. I have not had a winner in six months and though I am no Olivier, if he fought Sugar Ray, he would say, that is the thing in the ring, it is the play. So, give me a stage where this bull here can rage and though I can fight, eh, I rather, uh, I would much rather recite that is entertainment. And here I would uh, like to, I would like you to watch the last scene from Raging Bull. Please note down the link. <laughs> 